Let's start to set up a fight sequence. The scene is 03 begin. Let's go ahead and hit play and take a look. All right, so we have two different animations, one of our Aragor character going through a punch sequence, and then we have our biker running across the scene. Okay, so you kind of get the idea of what we're about to set up here. We'll have our Aragor character uh, punch the biker, and then we'll have a ragdoll tied to the biker that will collapse on impact. So this is going to be really neat stuff. Now before getting started, what I like to do is, is kind of just check the scene. So I'd go to the uh, story here, and you can see that there's a story clip that's driving Aragor. And this is actually from one of the tutorial assets that come with Motion Builder. So I've just tied the two assets together. And the same is true for the biker, only his data is from Maya, I believe. But either way, again, it's just a straightforward process to set all of this up and to retarget the animation. And we discuss this workflow and introduction to Motion Builder. So let's go ahead and start to, to tweak a few things. You can see that for one, the biker is not in uh, the right direction here. We need to turn him around. So I'll go back to the navigator window. Let's go to the scene here and let's go ahead and grab the biker's reference node. All right, so with that selected, we can now go to his properties and we can rotate him 180 degrees in his Y axis. All right, so now he's faced the right direction. Let's go ahead and scrub through. Okay, much better. All right, now at this point, what I'd like to do is also go ahead and plot his animation back to the skeleton. Here's why. It's just a faster way to offset the animation so that we can have the biker move in at the time he should. We can always do that from the control rig. However, I find that from the control rig, may not quite get all of the animation you need. So it's a lot safer to plot the animation back down to the skeleton, and then we can go ahead and transfer that back to the control rig once we're finished. All right, so let's go ahead and take care of that next. It's just a matter of heading over to our character controls window, and we'll switch over to the biker. Now at this point, we can go ahead and choose bake plot, and we'll plot back to the skeleton. All right, so that removes his uh, control rig. Everything's playing back just fine still. So now, it's really just a matter of finding out when we would like to have him run into the, the Aragorn character for the punch. And we'll actually worry about that in the next lesson because we'll want to also add anticipation so that the biker's attack kind of looks uh, threatening before he gets knocked out. So he's not blindly running into this attack. Now something else I'd also like to tweak is the time at which the biker actually reaches Aragor. So it would be nice to have the biker kind of slow down as he is in the animation before he reaches. And then at, at that point, that's when we'll go ahead and add the anticipation to the biker's attack. All right, so let's go ahead and work on this next. We'll go ahead and grab uh, the biker's reference node again. Let's go to our move tool. Let's figure out when we would like to have him slow down. All right, great. And I'll go ahead and just start to translate him back. It actually looks like we'll need to grab the biker node instead and just go ahead and bring that back. Okay, great. So this looks well. Let's go ahead and scrub through. You can see he starts to slow down, and that's about the point when he's going to swing before Aragor attacks. Great. Okay, great. Well, at this point, we can go ahead and bring our attention to Aragor. So you can see that, for one, he's very small. Also, taking a look at this, his path is a bit off. We have a few options to fix that. We could either fix the biker's path or we could fix Aragor's path. Let's go ahead and move to, to Aragor. So what I'll do here is go ahead and switch to his controls. And I'll go ahead and, again, plot to his skeleton. Let's give it a second. That way, again, if we needed to offset anything, it's a lot easier to do that. And it'd just be a matter of going to his root. So finding his, uh, his skeleton here, with that selected, 
At that point, you can go ahead and right click and choose Select Branches. So it's the second to last, last choice when we right click. And notice I'm doing that on his hip node. So when we go ahead and do that, now we're given all of his uh, keyframe data and we can edit that in the function curves window. We'd simply go ahead and grab translation and rotation tracks, press the A key to view all, and then we can go ahead and select all of our keys and notice we have these very helpful tools to offset the animation. So we'll be using these tools in the following lesson. But at this point what I'd like to do is go to the navigator window and start to scale up Aragor. So we could always grab his, his root, go to the scale tool, start to bring him up a bit more, and it's a good idea to actually scrub on the transport controls to about the point where the two characters line up so we know exactly what size to bring Aragor. Alright, so that's pretty good. Now they're both at roughly the same height, so that will work out well. Alright, so now let's go ahead and make sure that Aragor is in the biker's path. So we'll just go to our move tool, again with the root node selected, and we'll just go ahead and translate him over. All right, at that point, again, we'll go ahead and check his height. You can see that we need to scale him up a bit more. The biker still looks a bit threatening, so we'll go ahead and just start to scale up Ergor. All right, that looks much better, and we'll scrub through to make sure we're satisfied with the changes. All right, so that will work out very well. Great, so the main thing to take from this lesson is if you ever need to tweak any of your your uh, character's performance, it's a good idea to go ahead and, uh, let's say, plot the animation back. If it's not a tweak that involves, let's say, fixing a pose, but let's say offsetting the entire performance, go ahead and plot it down to the skeleton. That way you can grab all of your keys and offset it to the time you need it to be at. Or if you notice that your character is a bit low, again, plot to the skeleton, go ahead and translate him up from his root, and then you can go ahead and plot that back to the control rig to save those changes out. Well, at this point, we're ready to now stop the lesson, and in the next lesson, we'll go ahead and work on adding anticipation to the biker's attack.